Amen. I think somebody requested a special prayer for them, and they want to forget it. Let's not forget the, the Bass family, the Hardy, the Thompson family, and certainly the Adams, and the Duncan family. So if you know of anybody else that's family in prayer, as we pray, you spiritually lift their name up. Somebody say amen. 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 We, we're going to remember our joy as she comes and leads us to the throne of grace. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. The Father, opportunity to come to your house. Yes, so we can worship you. Yeah. And we can have the bow our hands and praise you in the beauty of holiness. We thank you for the privilege of prayer. We thank you that you allow us to come into your courts and into your Woo. gates. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Praise and Lord, we ask your blessing today upon this service. Yeah. Move by the Spirit, Lord. Yeah. Oh, God, as you do today, we're going to shake this place yeah. from top to bottom. We pray for every soul that's here today, Lord Jesus, that you will give us ears to hear your word and a heart to receive. We pray that if there be any boundaries, Lord, that you will loose them now so we will be free to hear your word. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We pray for every person that's on that prayer list whose name was called. You know every situation. Woo! We know that nothing is too hard for you. Yeah, we we'll ask you to heal the sick, console those that don't need to console. We pray, Lord Jesus, especially for the hardest family today. We pray that you will bless them and comfort them and give them strength in them and show them love. Lord Jesus, we do pray for those Christians in Russia and Ukraine today. Lord, we pray that you will protect them. Let them know that you have them saving them no matter what might be going on. We pray, Lord Jesus, for this Durham. Every, we pray that every minute today that's in this town, that's standing in the pulpit to lift up your name. Amen. We pray that you will anoint them, Lord Jesus, so that your word might go forth. We pray that you will know that our pastor today, Lord Jesus, and he might preach the word. Woo. Oh, God, preach the word. Yeah. Preach the word. We pray for the usher and the choir. Yeah. And we thank you. We give you praise. And all glory and honor shall be done. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Somebody say, I will see you. Chicken, so we'll have that 
And so it's going to be a fourth, fourth Saturday, a uh, brother long fourth Saturday. You know, for a little while, it's going to get you a plate. And then we might even have Brother Duncan sing. I don't know. So, so we're going to try to set some speakers out there and see how it goes. Fourth Saturday in April, fourth Sunday in April, be friends and family day. On that day, we have set about three family members you can, and we will count up the children and try to have a prize for the women like we do every year. They give you no time to trick them into coming back. All right, well, here you go. Introduce the family. <coughs>
traces the story of the Christian movement for the resurrection of Jesus in time when Paul was in Rome proclaiming the gospel with all fullness. At about the 26th chapter, we find Paul appealing to King Agrippa, wanting him to believe the gospel, the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And Paul says that he is certain that none of this has gotten by you. For everybody knows what's going on. Now, to do something in a corner or to speak in a corner was used to describe folk who are secretive. You ever seen secretive people? They like they whisper to each other, you know, and then when you come by, they stop talking. You, you met folk like that? And, and, and I'm glad this morning that, that we don't have that problem in the church. I'm glad this morning that, that church folk don't have secret meetings because there are no secrets in God's house. Amen. Uh, in the vernacular of today's language, a, a secret is something that only a few folk are supposed to know. Okay. Yet, yet I have discovered in my 60 something years that if you want something to remain a secret, the fewer folk you tell it to, the greater likelihood that it remains a secret. Amen. Why? Because there are some folks, somebody say some folks, whom you may approach and you may say, I need to tell you something. But if you can't tell somebody else, they can hardly wait for you to finish telling them before they are put themselves on out and on the speed dial. Honey, I got something to tell you. You know, you'll never be able to believe that. Guess what's going on in the sister so and so about? And if it wasn't bad enough, they would be the tell about it. And yes, I, I do believe that there's some things that that everybody should not go. This country has certain military secrets that we don't want to fall in the hands of our enemies. There are some things about you that I may not need to know. And I believe this morning that there are some things that should just be between me and the Lord. Some of the stuff I've done before I got saved ain't none of y'all business. You wouldn't like me. I really should have locked up and keep going away. But you don't need to know the details. Oh, hey, bro. Various paternal orders have secret handshakes and passwords that are only available and that should known, be only known by members. But this morning, I didn't come to talk to you all about that. For the words of our text this morning, the thing that we're talking about was not done in a corner. Paul, he shared his Damascus Road experience, the time of his conversion to Christianity. And this is the same man that was known as Saul, a chief persecutor of the first century church. This is the same Saul who cast a vote for the stoning of Stephen. The, one of the first seven deacons and, and St. Paul who, who helped to put others to death for their faith in Christ and Paul had a right to kill y'all and, and now we, we find Paul supporting Christians lifting up the name of Jesus and, and, and moving forward for the call and he's telling King of Rome of this story how he was in route to Damascus to prosecute the church how he had run into a man named Jesus how, how Lord Jesus met him and changed him from a persecutor to a preacher he's telling King of Rome that he all has been changed and that the thing that he used to do he just don't do no more, uh, and, and how many of us share our domestic world experience? Uh, how we became Christian? How many of us have told someone who was born out of your life when Jesus came into your life? But never, there's nothing wrong with testifying on what God has done for you. That testimony should 
know what it was that caused you to convert to Christianity. What it was that made you stand up and start walking straight. That shouldn't be a secret. Mm -hmm. You should be able to share that with others. That at some point, you know your life. You have to stop doing it and prove that you was doing it somewhere. They need to know that the other side the, 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 the same problem. See, folks, they got to them somebody who is in the same situation that you were in. Somebody was caught up in the same trap. They need to know how you got up and how you got over. So God, in the equation, will get them over to So Paul is telling them, he's telling them, look, I, I'm persuaded that you came to look. Because none of these things have been known done before. And what I'm saying is that sometimes we have the audacity. Somebody say audacity. To put our Christianity in a corner. A corner reserved for Wednesday night prayer service and Sunday morning worship. I'm saying that for some of us, it might not be the case. That you are going to work Monday through Friday and your co-workers will be surprised to find you in the church on Sunday. Because we keep our Christianity a secret. Now I'm not talking about nobody. I'm just talking about who we're talking about. Some folks join the church and you keep it a secret. Yet when we run away from the hospital, we're going help you somebody. We run out, we buy an invitation to tell everybody in the world that we have graduated. Everybody in the world. I guess it's because you know, they give you money when you graduate. <laughs> we want to shout it out in the mountains. We don't need the money in the paper. But let us graduate from being a son to become a child of God. How many of y'all are ready to invite everybody to, to see you get that time? To see you receive the right hand of fellowship. To see you and get into the church. I'm going to be ready to let them know that that's what. When you make that text line declaration, when you stop and you give your life to the Lord, and you let everybody in the world know it, then you sure enough can't go to the places you used to go to. You sure enough can't go to the places you used to go to. You have to stop talking in the way. You don't need to go to the best of words no more. Some of us have uh, never invited nobody to church. I won't leave that alone. All I'm saying is that it should never be a secret how good God has been to you. Did, did he wake you up this morning? Start your own way. Give you a reasonable portion of your health and strength. Yeah. Give you eyes to see, ears to hear, mouth to talk, legs to walk. Have you been good? Yeah. When you feel your chest right here, you feel the heartbeat, don't you? Yeah. You breathe. It's precious, fresh air in and out of your lungs. And the thing is, it is no secret for I heard him declare, I must be about my father's business. It is no secret how they convicted him on false charges, sentenced him to die on Calvary. No secret that he hung on the cross from the sixth to the ninth hour. And at about the ninth hour, he cried out, My God, my God, why have I forsaken you? And then somebody said that on the third day, what happened? He got up with a little heart, medium heart. With all power. And guess what? He's coming back. Al Gray used to sing that song. He's coming back. Just like he said he would. And I want to close by just telling you it is no secret what God can do. What He's done for us, He'll do for you. What all of God will do, He'll promise you. It is no secret what God will do. As we open the door of the church of Ashley this morning, if you die today, would you be absent from the body of the presence of the Lord? If not, then we invite you to open your heart and receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, 
thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes into righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. And look, look, if you have joined the church years ago, a week ago, and you have slipped back, y'all know you're in backsliders. Y'all know that God is married to the backslider. He will come against you. He has plucked you up out of the river and out of the river. He has cleaned you up and received you into this person. So, at the end of this service, if you need prayer, counseling, you want to join the church, then, I'll, then we'll meet you over here in this corner. Raise your hand at the door. We'll meet you right over here. Yeah, have a seat. We'll deal with you one on one. Amen. 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 But I, I want you to know more than anything that the thing I don't have a secret about is that I can't even live without him. I don't even want to live without him. Everybody understand that? Lisa, I don't even want to live without him. I want to walk with him and talk to him every single day of my life. Will y'all have with this? There is no way.
Amen. 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 Amen.